So, uh, my last sermon was over faith, and it was more of kind of to give you an idea of what faith, what's, what faith is, what it means to have faith, and the importance of faith to have a good relationship with God. This time, though, I want to talk to you about the nature of faith, its characteristics, what it means basically and how, how, how faith is expressed. So, but I want to start with the quote. It seems like I always like to start with some kind of quote. This is uh, from Corey Ten Boom. It says, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to an unknown God. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'm going to open in prayer here and then we'll get started. Lord, our Father, we want to again invite you to come join us in this service to give thanks to you Lord I ask that you guide me in my words Lord so that I may speak truthfully and faithfully for you Lord that I may truthfully and faithfully give your disciple your, your gospel Lord come join us please we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name Amen, Amen. so the, the the nature of faith is confidence in and commitment to God and Jesus Christ. But what does that confidence and commitment look like? That's kind of what this nature of faith is going to be about. So the first, the first nature of faith, this is no particular order. It's not like this one's higher than the other. Uh, but the first nature of faith is, is uh, to make God and Jesus the objects of that faith. We have to have faith in something or someone. But what do we mean by object? Because usually we think of object, we think of a material object, an inanimate object that you can hold and touch. So I decided to look up, my brain said, we need to dissect this. <laughs> so I found several, uh, I found four definitions for the word object that fit, I think fit for this. Uh, this nature where we make God and Jesus the objects of our faith. And, and the first one is, is something material that may be perceived by the senses. Now the senses are eyes, you know, are sight, smell, taste, uh, touch, and sound. Then there might be the sixth sense. Some people talk about the sixth sense. Sixth sense. I think that the sixth sense is our heart. Amen. That's our heart. But it says something material that may be perceived by the senses. Well, we do have material things where we can perceive God. I, I perceive God in all of you guys, the things you do, interacting with you. I perceive God outside when we have rain, the, the animals flying around, the, the flowers, the beauty of this world. I can perceive God in those material things. I can hear, hear Him in the worship music. I can... Taste them in the, the communion we had. I could taste, you know, he's, he's in everything. He's part of everything. He created it all. Amen. So, I, I had to take this a little further, though, because what, what's material? Like I said, we think of solid matter when we hear material. Uh, and the, the, what I found there that I felt fit this definition was uh, material is having real importance and uh, great consequence. So we know God and Jesus are important. They have great importance. They got, they're the only thing that's important. And we know that they also have consequences because, for us, because if we don't have faith, if we don't have salvation, we're not going to be happy for eternity. <laughs> so we want, they've got consequences. But again, my brain went a little deeper and thought, well, what's, what's consequences? What's, what's consequences mean? What, there's a lot of things that that could be. So consequences is importance with respect to power and to produce an effect. Well, we know that God and Jesus are all powerful. And we know that they produce an effect in us. They, they lift us up. They make us new. new. They make it, exactly. They make us new. They purify us. They, they, we glorify them and we have faith in them. So as you can see that since there's consequences and material that they are an object of our faith. They are definitely an object of our faith, even though they are unseen. 
And then the second definition of fear was something that when viewed stirs a particular emotion again. When you see a newborn child, that stirs an emotion. When you see a beautiful countryside or a beautiful mountain scene or the, or the ocean, that stirs a particular emotion. So again, the object of our faith, there's, they're there. And then the third one I got is uh, it's a goal or end of an effort or activity. Of course, they are definitely our goal and, and our, the end of our effort. We are here for them. We are here to worship them, to praise them, to learn about them, so that our faith in them will grow. So that we can expand and be closer to them. So that we can... The goal is to spend eternity with them. And we all reach for that. We all strive for that. And then the fourth one I found was a cause for attention or concern. Now we know that they, they need and they deserve our attention. They are our cause for our attention. They deserve our attention. We should pray to them continually and ask for forgiveness continually. So Hebrews uh, 11.6, I'm going to be jumping around to various verses here. I'm not going through any particular book or uh, like Pastor Randy does. Uh, I'm going to be jumping around, so, <clears throat> but they should be on the player behind us. So Hebrews 11.6 uh, says, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So he, it's, first of all, without faith, we can't please God. We have to have faith to please the Lord. But if we seek Him diligently, He will reward us. And faith glorifies God and it, it proves that we have more confidence in Him than in ourselves. He is all. God should be first and foremost in our lives. Uh, in John 14, 1, uh, we can also see where Jesus is the object of our faith. Where Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. So what Jesus is telling us here is that if we can put our faith in God, we can also put our faith in Him. If God is our object, He can be our object. And I would even argue that the Holy Spirit could be the object of our faith. Because the Holy Spirit is what convicts us. The Holy Spirit is what guides us and keeps us on that narrow path to, to, to the Lord. <clears throat> so the, uh, the second nature of faith is to have a person, personal trust in God. And in Psalm uh, 18.2, we see the, the Lord, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. He basically, He's everything. The Lord is everything to us. Uh, David wrote this psalm after uh, the Lord had protected him from some enemies that he was being chased by. And he got his personal trust in God through ex experiences. My, my, my personal trust in God has come through my experiences that I didn't learn right away. I didn't know that these experiences had happened until I got saved and then I could look back on my life and realize that I was interacting with God and the Holy Spirit the whole time. He was there the whole time. I know I've said this multiple times. You know, when I was denying the Lord, He was there for me. Those are my personal experiences. And I'm sure we all could come up with some that we have here where the Lord was there for us and we didn't know it. We didn't ask for it. He is always there. Always there. He is always there. <clears throat> uh, but if we too have personal trust in God, He will be our rock and our fortress. He will be our strength. He will deliver us. He will be our shield and our horn of salvation. He will be our stronghold. He will always be there for us. He will protect us and provide. Amen. All we need is faith. We also see in Psalm 34.4, uh, personal faith, where David says, I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Again, David's 
being protected by the Lord from his enemies. And, and David looked to God with loving trust and faith. He looked to God with loving faith. He had faith that the Lord would protect him and deliver him. And God heard David's cry with love and mercy and sympathy, and he responded by delivering David from his sin or his, his enemies <clears throat> and protected him. And we can have that too with the Lord. We just need to pray. And he will he will protect us, deliver us from our fears. And it doesn't have to just be enemies. I mean, if you're afraid of something, if you're having anxiety, if you're depressed, angry, the Lord will deliver you. All it takes is prayer. <laughs> The third nature or characteristic of faith is, is assurance. Uh, and assurance is confidence and certainty that God will keep His promise. And what's that promise is if we have faith, we are salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. We will have salvation. That's His promise that we have faith He will keep. That He will provide for us and protect us. That he, we will have salvation as shown in Ephesians 2.8. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and not and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. Now the gift of God isn't salvation or faith. The gift of God is grace. The salvation comes from faith in Jesus Christ. That's the salvation. But the gift of God in that is His grace. And we all know grace is receiving something you didn't deserve. And mercy is not receiving that which you did deserve. But also uh, in Hebrews 10.22, it says, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from, e from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And the, having our hearts sprinkled uh, in that verse is... The blood of Jesus Christ is being shed, being sprinkled, and purifying our hearts of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And the, the, the being washed with pure water is, is talking to the Holy Spirit, convicting us, uh, purifying our lives by the means of the Word of God. This book here. We need to study this diligently, read it diligently. We need to learn this so that we may disciple all nations. He is... Glorious. The Lord is glorious. Uh, the fourth nature of uh, faith is trust in what is unseen. And as in Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 5 7, uh, we see, for, for we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what faith is believing in and trusting in what you cannot see. Not, not giving up, not doubting, just straight and narrow on that narrow path without trusting in the Lord to guide you down that path. That is faith. And that's unseen. We don't know what's in, up ahead on that path. That's the unseen part. Uh, but David Guzik, uh, he says this about walking by faith. He says, to walk by faith, not by sight, is one of the great and difficult principles of Christian living. And that's true. <laughs> Faith is difficult. It's, it's not easy. Because, uh, you know, we're humans. We want, we want proof positive. I hear an argument all the time against God is give me 100% proof. Give me proof. Well, you're missing out on faith. <laughs> if you had that, uh, the faith is so great that it, it's just glorious. But he goes on to say, It must amaze the angels that we live for, serve, and are willing to die for a God we have never seen. Yet we love Him and live for Him, living by faith, not by sight. Amen. And that's faith. I, I mean, the apostles showed this. Not just the apostles. I mean, there's Stephen. He was willing to die for a God he never met. He got stoned for a God he never met. Unseen God. Um, and also there's faith in an unseen future. And Hebrews 11.22 says, uh, By faith, Joseph, 
when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. So that's referring to uh, when Joseph, uh, in Genesis 50, uh, verse 24. Uh, and in, in, in that verse, uh, Joseph says, God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. He had faith that the Lord was going to live up to his promise, that he was going to give his children and the children of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, he was going to give them the promise of an unseen future. But he had faith that that unseen future was going to come true, that the Lord was going to keep his promise. Uh, the fifth nature is obedience to God through faith. Uh, true faith is demonstrated in obedience to God. That is, to obey the message of the gospel by repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we go back to Ephesians where you know, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's, I believe, probably the most important part of faith is in Jesus Christ for our salvation. I mean, He is the propitiation for our sins. He, His body was broken for our sins. His blood was shed for our sins. He hung up on that cross for our sins. Amen. So our faith should be in Him. Amen. And if we have that faith in, in Jesus Christ, we will be saved. We will have salvation and we will be together for eternity in love and peace and happiness. No allergies. <laughs> no sickness. <laughs> um, so in, in Romans uh, 1 5, it says, Through him we have received grace and apostleship. This is uh, Paul talking. Uh, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Uh, Paul was given grace and apostleship so that he could call all nations, that's us, all nations, Jew and Gentile, to obedience and of faith. And obedience that is necessary that is a necessary consequence of true faith. So if we're going to have true faith, we have to be obedient to God. We don't get to pick and choose what we want to do. What we want to obey. Amen. We must obey. And, you know, the, Jesus says when He was asked by the Pharisees, what is the, the one true commandment? That was, love the Lord your God with all your uh, heart, with all your mind, and all your soul. And the second is just like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two commandments. I mean, if we can do that. Because you think about it, if you love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, you're not going to want to sin. So you don't have to worry about any of the other ten commandments because you're automatically doing that if you, if you love the Lord. Amen. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, to what better way? I mean, if you love your neighbor as yourself... You can't get any greater love than Jesus, than His His love again, His sacrifice for us. But obedience is important. We all fall short. I know I do, but thankfully we have forgiveness. <laughs> so the Lord will forgive us. We just need to repent and ask for it. Uh, the sixth one, uh, the final one, is the na nature of faith is works. And this is a hot topic. Some people want to think that there are religions out there that think that you can be saved and you can get to heaven by your works. If you do good deeds, uh, you can get to heaven. And I used to think that before I was saved. I was one of those people because I surely believed that God would not allow a person to go down to hell if, if a person lived their life perfect sinless, let's just say, even though it's not possible because we're not Jesus. But if a person lived their life and, and followed all Ten Commandments, except for obviously they, they I shouldn't say all Ten Commandments because they can't follow several of them because you know, the Lord their God, they, 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 they're going to have idols and they're going to have false gods and they, they're not going to keep the Sabbath and things. But the ones where they have honor your mother and father, uh, 
No, don't murder, don't lie, don't steal, those, those things. If they were good, I used to believe, hey, why would he condemn, condemn them to hell? And again, I wrongfully believed that it was God that condemned, and it's not. It's the individual for their lack of faith. That's, what's, that's what I never got told how to do it. I just got told I was condemned. And I've come to find out that all I had to do is have faith, and that's the easiest thing. It's so simple. I mean, you know, faith is not the easiest thing, but it's not like I got to go out there and fight. Well, I guess I do. I got to I got to preach the gospel to those that don't want to hear it. So I guess I do have to fight. Got to fight the devil every time he wants to tempt me. But faith is just a glorious thing, and it, and it brings you salvation, and it brings you peace, and uh, brings you happiness, uh, and joy, and love. I mean, all you guys came to my life because of faith. Oh yes, exactly. Brings you peace. Um, but we need to, through true faith is proven through good works we do for others and how we live a godly life. Are we glorifying God in our hearts and in our minds and our souls? Are we glorifying God through our words and our thoughts and our actions? Because there's no other way to glorify Him than through those things. Um, and we see in James 2.18, where this is talking about works, uh, it says, But some will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. And what that means there is, it's, it's not saying that you have to have works in order to have faith, but it's saying if you have true faith, the works will follow. They will be a byproduct of that faith. Amen. You will want to do it. You will want to be obedient to the Lord. You will want to seek Him out. You will want to love your neighbor. It will come naturally to you once the faith, and the more that faith grows, the deeper that faith gets with God and the more that relationship with the Lord, the more you'll change and the more you'll, the, the more you'll want to be good, you know, do good things. I mean, I've, you can ask my wife, I've changed a lot. I used to be an angry person. I used to hate people. I always said that I could be Robson Caruso and if I was Robson Caruso, I'd kick everybody else off the island because I wanted to be alone. Uh, but... I, my mouth was not the cleanest mouth. I had a trucker's mouth. Uh, I, I had anxiety and depression and all sorts of problems. And now I see movies that I've seen in the past, decades ago, and, and they say words that I don't want to hear. And I'm like, oh, can't, not watching that anymore. <laughs> can't, can't see that movie anymore. And, and I've always told uh, one of my... As far as how it's changed me, faith has changed me too, is uh, I've been listening to the radio, Christian music. And one day I thought, you know what, I hadn't listened to this Pandora station that I had. And it was secular music, it wasn't Christian. And I put that radio station on, and if those of you, none of you here really know me except for my family up front here, but I listen to really, really hard rock music. And I'm talking shake the windows and the foundation hard rock music. I mean, it was loud screaming music. And I put that Pandora radio on and the, the song had played but 15 seconds and I was already screaming and yelling at the guy in front of me because he wasn't moving fast enough. Uh. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, you know what? That's a big note. <laughs> put it back on the radio to the to the Christian station because there's no way I need to be angry like that. I shouldn't be angry like that. And and there's things like that. The faith has changed me in that way that I don't have the, nearly the stress. I mean, my stress level has almost dropped to zero. My anxiety has just dropped to zero. I used to be one of those guys that would sit here and think of a situation one that hasn't even happened yet, oh, yeah. and plausible possibilities of what I would do and what I could do, or I could be having a conversation with somebody, and I'd be thinking four or five possibilities, responses ahead, and what their responses might be, and I'd be staring off in the space, and people are thinking I'm not listening to them, but I'm actually formulating my response to their response to my response. You know? I don't have that anxiety anymore. 
And it's Very almost good. a zero. Stress, mm -hmm. depression, it's almost all zero. And it's all faith. It's all to God. It's all to the Lord. For, mm -hmm. and, and I owe it to my wife because she's the one that, because of her, I started going to church. Mm -hmm. But she's the, and then the, the children, <laughs> they helped along there too. But to end this here, you can see that so true faith is it puts its tr puts God and Jesus as the objects of faith, and true faith is personal trust in God and Jesus. Must have personal trust. Uh, it is a, it is assurance that God will keep His promise of salvation of everlasting life. It's trust in the unseen and the unseen future. So it's trust in an unseen God, and it's trust in that future that we. We don't see it. You know, you've got a destination. If you're driving your car, you've got a destination. You can see the road ahead. But we don't see that, that destination yet. It's trusting that it will come. It's uh, true faith is obedience to God. And true faith is justified by our good works. Again, like I said, works aren't necessary for faith. But true faith, the works will come. And you won't have a choice. The works will come. It takes time. They didn't come right away from me either, so it's not like just because you may not be doing all that that you don't have faith. Faith takes time. It's not uh, not something that's going to just pop up overnight. It's like God's answer to our prayers. He's not going to He's not going to answer it immediately, like, unless it's His desire to. Uh, so it, it all takes time. But that's what I wanted to talk to you about because, like I said last time, I had spoken on faith and the importance of faith, and I wanted to kind of give you what faith should look like, uh, what what true faith looks like, and, and what to expect, and how we should act with true faith. So in closing, uh, uh, Doug's going to play another song, um, and we're going to do the invitation, and then uh, I'll dismiss you. Before that, though, I want to say a prayer here. Nice of you to join us, Mr. Cricket. <laughs> one, of the, one of the material things that we see the Lord right there in front of us. Where were you when we had music? We could have used you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you bow your heads, we'll, sit, we'll pray and close out here and have an invitation. Lord, we want to thank you for this glorious day. We want to thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace for your sacrifice for our sins so that we may have salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for joining us, Lord, for giving us laughter, love, happiness, for providing all our needs, for protecting us, for being our stronghold, Lord. We thank you. Our faith is in you and you alone. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' holy name. So I want to say if you... Uh, for the invitation, I'm gonna. I'll be standing off over here. Um, and if you want to come by, if you uh, have a question about faith, I'll happily talk to you about it. Um, if you just need a prayer, and as usual, if you just need a hug, I'll, I'll give you a hug. You know, I'm, I'm always open to a hug. So Doug's gonna start this song here, and then I'll be off to the side here. So. To keep with tradition, because I'm I'm all about tradition, we're gonna dismiss with a one, two, three, hallelujah. So one, two, three, hallelujah. hallelujah.